We checked out of our hotel, stopped for coffee, and now we're on our way to Gananoque to get on our Thousand Islands cruise. It's a one hour cruise that takes you through some of the islands here in the Gananoque and Kingston area. We actually found out that you can take a cruise from Kingston, but we didn't find that out until after we booked our cruise through Gananoque. But Gananoque is only about a 25 to 30 minute drive away from Kingston with no traffic, so we're making the drive now. and. I think it's going to be a really nice day, so we're really excited to give this a try and we'll show you how it goes. Located along the border between northern New York State and southeastern Ontario, there are 1,864 islands making up the Thousand Islands. And for over 150 years, these islands have been a vacationer's paradise. We have made it to the Thousand Island Cruise waiting area, and as you can see, my boat is right behind me. We are taking a one hour cruise, but you can also do a two and a half hour cruise with this cruise company. When you arrive in the town, you'll be able to find plenty of parking, which is about $4, or there's free parking from the street. We did the four hour parking because we also wanted to look around the town before we got on our cruise and after. So we're just about to get on the boat, and our cruise officially leaves at 10, so we're gonna show you the Thousand Islands. We left promptly at 10 a.m. for our one-hour cruise, and after we left the dock and heard the safety announcements, we were allowed to move around to enjoy the views from different parts of the boat. We started up on the top deck, where it was extremely windy and noisy, but there were also seats on a lower deck inside to provide shade for anyone who didn't want to be out in the open. The cruises are operating at much less capacity, but there's still not very many places to sit because they've removed some seats. So before the benches used to go all the way across the top of the ship, but now they've removed them so people don't have to sit close to each other. But we found a good spot right at the back of the boat and it's much more quiet back here. Something I really enjoyed about our cruise was the narration that shared historical facts and information on the islands as we cruised by. We learned that these waters are cruised by cottagers, boat enthusiasts, and tourists to enjoy the scenery and island life. And as history would note, these waterways were once used by pirates and prohibition bootleggers. Another fun fact I learned was that to be considered an island, it must stay above water for 365 days a year, so basically always, and it needs to support at least one living tree. There are so many pretty cottages on these islands. They get passed down from generation to generation, so if you want one, you pretty much need to be born into it. Many of the islands are actually open to the public. Some of them have campgrounds, cottages for rent, and public parks. Others have designated areas for boaters to set anchor and enjoy the views from their boats. But many of the islands and cottages are privately owned. So people call this cottage Napoleon's Hat. It's been charming visitors ever since it was built in 1913. Inside, Napoleon's Hat has six-sided rooms with a foyer, dining room, Kitchen. You won't find a single right angle anywhere. In case you hadn't noticed, the scenery in the Thousand Islands is absolutely beautiful and perfect for nature lovers, bird watchers, and water enthusiasts. Throughout our one hour cruise, we probably passed over a hundred sailboats and numerous fishing boats. These waters are also famous for trophy sized fishing catches like salmon, trout, bass and even muskies that can be more than 60 inches long. But if you don't want to venture out on the water, you can also take a scenic driving route. My parents actually took us on a road trip around the Thousand Islands when we were younger, and on that trip, we even got to stop at Bolt Castle on Hart Island. Can we all just take a minute to appreciate Alan's shade creation? I uh, brought my sweater because I thought it was gonna be cold on the boat. It is a little chilly, but it also has a dual purpose. 
I might start marketing these as a shade device. Personal shade protective gear. So we are on our way back to Gananoque now. The cruise is sadly almost over. We learned some really interesting things though. They had an audio recording playing the entire way and it told you really fun facts about some of the cottages, the islands, and the way that Canada Parks is trying to preserve nature. So we really enjoyed the cruise. It's nice and sunny, very windy, and overall, two out of that summer. The hour passed by too quickly, and I could have easily stayed out sightseeing in the area much longer. If you have small children, the one hour cruise is probably your best bet, but adults might enjoy the longer cruise option, especially if there is nice weather. If you do come to Gananoque and take a Thousand Islands cruise, I would definitely recommend coming during the week because it's far less busy than on the weekends. So that's a tip if you are coming to Gananoque to take a Thousand Island cruise, remember, try and come during the week and definitely book your tickets in advance. After disembarking, we climbed into our car and headed through the charming town of Gananoque. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to stop because we were on a mission to get to Ottawa. Stay tuned for the second part of our day to see what we got up to in Canada's capital. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Thousand Islands. And as always, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe for more travel videos coming soon.